you're going to go here, set view, and we want to make an isometric view. And now there's four standard views, which are going to be from the four corners, if, as long as you're like oriented with like the, the traditional axes. And it's kind of hard to know which one's which. I somehow guessed first try. Um, but see, it'll give you everything. And then now I'm going to zoom in over here. And if that's like what I like about it, then we can go there and say, you know what? Yeah, let's do it. I don't really like where that sits on the site now that I look at the angle. So maybe we'll put it here. And then I've got that now. So once you're happy with it, see it's in parallel projection. You can go to set, cam uh, set view. And then notice that the only views that you have are the traditional like ones that existed before. In order to save a new one, you need to go here where it says named views. And by default, they're, oops, I think I made this a tab for some reason. So if you look, you can do this, which says save as. Normally, you would see more stuff here. I think for some reason, mine is showing weird. So it says no views have been saved. But if we save this one as diagram one, whoa, diagram, diagram one. Now notice right here it says diagram one. And like I can always, and it shows you a picture of it. So I can close this, go to set view, or let's go here and right click on that so it sets all of our views back to the standard ones. Now I lost that view. But I could make this one that view if I wanted. You go to set view, and now look, it exists under here under the name views. So if you go diagram one, it will jump and make it there. And then you gotta set it to shade it again if you want. So we're almost there. The next thing to realize is we have way more information in Rhino than we need in Illustrator. Does that make sense? Because in Rhino, we're in three dimensions, whereas once we get to Illustrator, we're just going to be flat, right? So instead of trying to bring, especially if you have a complicated model, rather than exporting the 3D and bringing it into Illustrator and having millions of lines all overlapping and going everywhere, it would be a lot nicer for us if we had this whole thing and we didn't have any of this. Let me just move this over for now. You'll see why in a second. So what you can do is tell Rhino to take the view that we just made and flatten it and get rid of all the three-dimensional aspects of it, but make it look exactly like it does in this view. So to do that, it's basically if you just took a camera and took a picture of it and then just flattened it over there in our space. And then we can export that flat line work because that's way more like what you would have in Illustrator. So the command to do that is called make2d. So it sounds way more complicated than it really is. So make2d, because you want to make your thing two dimensions. So you type in make2d, and it says select objects to draw. This is why it's cool, because you don't even need to delete. I've seen people sometimes like, oh, I'm going to export. Let me delete everything or hide my entire model except what I want to export. You can have a million things. Once you do the make2d, it will ask you what you want to make 2D, and then you hit enter, and then you get this little window. So this gives you, and they've made this, this is a lot nicer in Rhino 6 than it was in Rhino 5. So if you have Rhino 5, you'll see it looks different, and you don't have all these options, but they, it can work either way. It'll ask you what view you want to look at it from, because obviously that geometry exists in all the views, right? So you're telling it, I want it to look the way it looks in this view, not in all the other ones. And then the properties, do you want to make it from the input objects, from the output, or do you want it to maintain the source layers? So when it creates the Make2D, you'll notice my layers, I'll get a bunch more layers. They will say Make2D at the beginning and then the name of whatever layer it used to be. It'll say, so now we have building two, building one, and site. You'll get a make2d site, make2d building, make2d building one. 
And so you want to make sure you have that. So you can do from input object by output layer. So let's leave it on the standard one just because that's typically what you guys will do. And then this one's important for diagramming. Make sure you check hidden lines. And then this one's really good, group output, because that will make it a group right away instead of in case a lot of the commands in Rhino that generate new stuff by default will either let you choose to group it or at least once it's generated a bunch of new objects, it has them highlighted and selected. Get in the habit of trying to group it right away or else you'll end up unselecting it and then you have like a million little objects to pick and sometimes they're on top of other geometry so there's no real like clean way to grab them. And then we have more options. If you wanted the viewport rectangle, like to know exactly what the frame of the view was, you could do that. It's not that key right now. And then the layer name is going to be make 2D based off whatever it goes. So I'm going to hit OK. And it's going to think. And notice it made all these make 2D layers. So let's see which ones I got. So it's made make 2D visible curves and make 2D hidden curves. So I'm going to redo it in a minute because that's not what I wanted, but I wanted to see what the standard one is. Notice how this way it only gave us two layers in reality, visible and hidden. If I wanted to control them differently in Illustrator, like the site, just make the site really light and then these, I would want it to have a version of each one for each type, right? So now if you look here, it kind of looks like it, right? But you'll notice it's like totally flat. So from over here, it's weird, right? But when you look at this from the top view, and I zoom all my views to that, you'll see it looks exactly like it. Does that make sense? So let me put this one back to the other one. Oops. So I'm going to repeat this and notice it drops out the origin. That's why I moved all that stuff away so it wouldn't, I wouldn't lose it. So I don't really like that. I'm going to undo. And now I'm going to repeat make 2D. Oops. Make 2D. Select objects. Enter. And here I'm going to tell it maintain source layers. Make 2D. Keep everything else the same. Let's see if this one does it the way I like. Yeah. So it looks more complicated, but you'll see when we're in Illustrator, that's way more useful than what we got the first time. And so it doesn't look any different. It still looks like the right view. It's just totally flat when you look at it like that. And now we're going to go File, Export, Selected. Rather than saying Export with Origin, we're going to do Selected. And then here's what's really cool. Most software, when you go to export and you look at what type of files, you get like two or three choices. Rhino has so many choices, it's the only one I know that has a scroll bar for like how many file types you can export. So like there's so many things you can do where if you look for Illustrator, you can actually export a, a native Illustrator file. You don't even have to do a DWG or PDF and then convert it into Illustrator it will give you a native Illustrator file. So that's really good because it does the conversion for you. And then you can go into Options and change all these or you just hit Save and it used to just bring you to that same menu regardless. Oh, I don't have a name to it. So Architecture, let's go to the folder. So let's go in here and call this one Diagram 1 save. See it brings that same menu up whether you go to options or not. So right now you can do snapshot of current view or if this was a floor plan and you were going to be printing these to scale this is where you would want to scale it. And you can say preserve model scale one inch equals one inch or some sort of scale factor or when you you can do it one to one and then when you open it in Illustrator it gives you another option to scale 
if you're going to try and print something to scale, only scale in one of the two. I don't recommend scaling it here by some factor and then trying to figure out what the factor would be in the other software and then scaling twice. I would say make one inch equal um, like something here or one foot to something or just do snapshot. For diagrams, there is no scale because it's a diagram. So just do snapshot and don't even worry about trying to scale it. Because when you're in Illustrator, you just scale it manually. Um, but if it does have to be to scale, that's where you would make sure to spend some time and figure it out. Um, say OK. And see, it takes one second. Like, file successfully saved as diagram one. So now, let's minimize this and let's see what we got. So see it is a native file. We open it. Let's open Illustrator. So that's launching. And it's giving us this. So I exported it from the wrong view. So that's why it looks weird. So we can close that. No. So I had the wrong view active. You want to make sure you do it from, you see it's in perspective, it's active. You want to do it from top view. Export selected, override that one. Yep. And now we can open. Oh no, what am I going to do? So now it'll work. And see, we get it like that. And it looks a little weird, right? Because we have that white layer. So here I'm going to scale it. I'm going to hold Alt and Shift. So I just scale it like equally like that. And do that. So I don't need libraries here. And like. The main one you want to look at here is your layers and make sure right away that you've got all your layers. And if you notice, we do. We have Make 2D, Hidden Lines, Curves, Buildings, and that. So one thing I do right away 